So glutiramer acetate is an, another of the injectable medications that uh, has now been out over 25 years uh, for the treatment of multiple sclerosis. Its mechanism of action is also unknown. Um, it is a, a mixture of amino acids, if you would, that was originally designed, as I understand it, to mimic those amino acids that we would see in myelin. And the goal was to influence the presumed autoimmune reaction to myelin um, by the injection of those, this mixture of amino acids. I think the best way I can describe the efficacy of glutiramer is that when it's been compared using those endpoints to, the, to two of the other preparations of beta interferon, it was difficult to show a difference in efficacy. I would say that it has reduced the relapse rate in the range of 30%, and it has a greater impact on the MRI changes, but its impact on MRI changes is a little different in terms of which MRI changes uh, have the greatest impact. And I think we can say confidently that it also has a long-term impact on disability as well. So I would rate it as comparable in efficacy to the interferons. So glutiramer acetate is often used as a first-line medication. Uh, largely, like all of the injectable medications, has a long track record of safety, and we now have decades of use so that if there were long-term safety concerns, we they should have really arisen by now. So we don't test prior to or after the initiation of therapy with glutiramer. Different MS professionals do things differently, um, but the FDA does not require it, and we generally don't do it unless there's some other reason to do that testing. So beyond the injection site reactions, which can occur with any of the subcutaneous injective medications, Probably the most frequent other reaction that occurs in folks who use glutiramer is very uncommon, but it does occur. And that's a, a reaction that occurs right after the injection in which patients sometimes feel a squeezing in the chest or a tightness. They may describe shortness of breath. There's a sense of doom or discomfort. It's often a very frightening reaction. It's a reaction that we warn patients about when they first start glutiramer so that if it occurs, they'll recognize that it's not a heart attack or not some disaster, but it really is a reaction to the medication. It doesn't cause as much of the flu-like symptoms after the injection as do the interferon preparations. It causes some injection site reactions and can cause some atrophy of the, the fatty tissue beneath the skin in patients but usually that's a long-term manifestation, not an acute one. So its tolerability, I would say, although has different manifestations, its tolerability is similar to that of the beta interferons. The use of glutiramer during pregnancy is a little different than for some of the other medications. It's the only MS treatment for which the FDA has assigned a category B, which means that there is some evidence of safety during pregnancy. So of all of our treatments for multiple sclerosis, the first treatment for which there's a generic is glutiramer acetate. So given that there are branded forms of glutiramer acetate and generic forms of glutiramer acetate, and there are also differences in dosing intervals, uh, and I would say that the bulk of the data we have suggest that they are largely equivalent in tolerability, efficacy, and presumably in safety, although we don't have long-term trials with the newer forms. The FDA has a long-established way and process of determining adequate equivalency before they would let a generic uh, medication be marketed. And so the generic forms of glutiramer have withstood that scrutiny and are deemed to be equivalent. In terms of tolerability, the biggest difference probably is that the, when we inject higher doses less frequently, the injection site reactions, the impression is maybe more severe or longer duration, but then again less frequent. And so it's more a personal judgment call over whether more frequent smaller dose injections are better or worse than less frequent higher dose injections. Over the past two or three decades, 
the mainstay of initial therapy has been the injectable medications. As newer medications come out, different people weigh the risks and benefits differently. And so sometimes now we move on to oral or intravenous agents first. So once glutaramir is prescribed, it's generally very easy to obtain it for the patients. The pharmaceutical companies are very helpful in trying to get their products uh, to the patients. I view it as a clearly efficacious, perhaps modestly efficacious, injectable therapy, now with a very long track record of safety.